Hi folks, welcome to my Bit Retro Journal. Today I'll be doing another video for December 2023. Um, this time I'm going to be covering Concurrent DOS, which was a product by Digital Research that came out in 1984 initially. I think they had multiple versions. The one I'm going to be looking at is, is the first 386 version in 1987. Um, and it was, uh, Digital Research was founded by Kerry Kildall, um, who also was co-host of a TV show called Computer Chronicles. Um, and that's actually the first time I saw concurrent DOS, not back in the 80s and 90s, but when I was watching YouTube videos that came up a few years ago, and I was fascinated by it. And, and I actually had a lot of fun doing this video because I got to research and discover that there, in 1980, you know, early 80s, there was a lot of work on, on multitasking and concurrency. And the QO obviously was one of the first um, preemptive multitasking operating systems, but Digital Research's concurrent DOS came out, you know, a few months after the QL. And they also had this multitasking. I don't know if it's preemptive. Um, it, it has some limitations. The, the QL kind of models itself after Unix. Um, concurrent DOS sort of gives you four DOS sessions, sort of, and that's it. And you can run things in each one of those and, and, and flip between them. I'll show you how that works. If you watched my, if you want to go and watch a, a, my last year's DOS Denver video, then I think I'm going to try to start putting a link here so you can actually easily click to it. I ran DOS, I ran MS DOS in parallel, you know, two versions of it on my QL with expanded memory. And I used a, a, a windowing slash task manager called Choice that comes with ICE. And, uh, and then in fact, um, a month earlier, I showcased Choice. Um, and again, maybe another video pointer here uh, just to see how Choice works. Um, and I think I did it on unexpanded QL just to show you that you, you a way to run tests and keep um, not having them overwrite the, the video because that's the, one of the flaws on the QLs. It just doesn't create screen buffers. But it's interesting how back in 84, 85, they all were sort of solving the same problem. And in that particular Computer Chronicle episode when Gary Kildall was showcasing concurrent DOS, but I was talking about Top View, which is you know, IBM's version, which I, I want to do a video eventually on. Um, I wish they would have talked about the QLs, QDOS, but again, the QL was just not as um, well known. It was, you know, in Europe, England, and it wasn't as popular at the time. And of course, it never became as popular. But before I go, and I'm going to show you concurrent DOS, not on real hardware. I'm going to do it on my, uh, emulate this on my PC because I just don't have a 386. But I want to quickly show you um, just the flavor of multitasking that the QL gives you. So let me just do that real quick. I'm just going to go out into the, I guess what we could call it shell, and uh, MDV8, Microdrive 8, oops, I did not use, oh, it's not 9, 8, <clears throat> kind of typing from a weird angle. So here it is, and we have, so if I open up, so here I have a single command shell, and the way Dr. Uh, concurrent DOS works from digital research is it'll, it, it gives you four of those windows you can use the control uh, key with a control number combo to get through them the QL obviously doesn't do that but it could um, and for instance uh, I wrote this program this is just a command shell program this is a prototype it's not fully functional I'm actually ported it to the Macintosh I've done videos on that but um, uh, I could, so one could easily write software that creates a shell environment. But again, the QL's interface is a bit more like Unix. So now I have two. Right, I can do the date function works here. And I think here you got to do print date. Yeah. Um, but I, I, for instance, I can also resize my window. I have a window function, window uh, 100, comma, 200, comma, uh, 100, uh, let's do 10, comma, 10. <clears throat> and that puts it sort of here all along. Uh, I guess I wanted to do window 200, comma, 100, comma, 10, comma, 10. Oops. Oh, plural. 200. I haven't used this in a while. That's a bit more realistic, and I still have my other cursor here. There, MDV8. See here that the windows obviously are going to overwrite themselves, and that's sort of the 
the flaw in um, on the QL. But um, and then if I, you know, if I had uh, if this worked, dir mdv two whatever, uh, but that's not implemented. It it it, it doesn't do anything because the dir command um, uh, is not hooked in. It was just a prototype. I I, I ported this to the Mac to create a command show there, but still I can um, mdv eight baton exe. So I. So I have the ability to run multiple programs. You can see that the screen is a mess, but still, you know, multitasking, 128K of memory, it's very efficient. And that's not how concurrent DOS works. Although again, still impressed with how concurrent DOS works. So let's just do a, a bouncing line of three. We can get this back if we want, um, right? In fact, if I do a mode, uh, eight, uh, it's mode four. Oh. You can see that things are starting to slow down, but, um, I guess if I redraw my window, uh, 200 comma 100 comma 10 comma 10. Oh, no, actually, uh, <laughs> yeah, so I guess you just have to use clear screen. So you, I, I'm just not getting the border that I'm, I was trying to get, but I still have my command shell um, that I can get. But again, as I say, things tend to override each other. And this is uh, sort of the weakness on the QL's uh, side. However, um, on the uh, Dr. Doss side, you'll see that it's actually better. So let's go to my PC. Here we are on my desktop, and uh, so the first site you want to go to is winworldpc.com, uh, and you can see the URL here, and you'll get the concurrent DOS versions. It goes all the way from version 3 to uh, 386 version 3. Um, I'm using version 2 here. It's 1987. I always like to go as early as possible. I'm ignoring these. This came 1984, 85, 87, because the... Um, um, if you look at the, their first boot disk is actually a CPM disk. So it's like 330K as opposed to 360K. It's kind of weird. Uh, so these 386 ones, they're all 7, uh, 720K. And so, um, I'm using this one. Uh, the folks that you'll see online, uh, having done this installation, they use this one. Although the particular set coming from, from, from this site doesn't work. So they had to find it elsewhere because you get the disks, but the disks aren't bootable. These are, so it's perfectly fine. The other thing you need is, uh, it won't work on DOSBox, so you need to PCM, and I just downloaded PCM version 17. And then it doesn't come with ROMs. It tells you how you can get a few, but it turns out there's a GitHub page where they're all here. And you just go under code and download the zip, and then you have it. So uh, what I'm going to do is just quickly show you how to do the install, because I think that'll be valuable. So I'm just going to create a all the way from scratch test folder and inside of here I'm going to copy um, the zip files that I would have downloaded so it would have been I think it's yeah this version of concurrent DOS and it's PCM 17 and the ROM so I'm going to copy them into here so this is how you would start out create a folder and so the first thing to do is create a PCM folder because PCM does not create one when you extract it. And then you can just say extract files, extract all and browse into the PCM folder in test. And okay, extract. 31 megabytes, so not very big you know, uh, for modern machines. And um, I'm going to throw out my zip files just to keep things uncluttered as much as possible. Okay, so it's um, created this PCM directory, so I'm done with this. Throw it out. Um, I recommend you keep them, obviously. So then uh, this has a ROM directory, but mo but they're all empty. It just has a text file that says ROM should go here. <laughs> so throw that ROMs directory out. And then... Uh, these are the ROMs. You're just going to create, copy that into PCMs. 
And you're going to get an error because um, this is a zip file and there's two that have this, files that have the same name. It's not a big deal. Just say skip. Yeah, it's trying to copy this one, BIOS bin. It's outside of a folder, I guess. And then change these to ROMs. The other thing I do to, to make it easier is I'll just create a shortcut. This is the main executable. I'll create a shortcut out of that. And then move that. I'm cutting it to move it here. Call it PCM exec. And then we can get rid of the ROM shortcut. So the last thing we have is these um, is digital rivers. And we want the boot. And um, you can obviously look at the readme, but I'm not going to go through that. I'm trying to do as fast as possible. Paste these in here, get rid of the zip. I'm going to rename these two. Um, I don't have to rename them. It's fine. So we have uh, these two. Okay, so now what we need to do is just start her up. And uh, it was pretty easy. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to create a, a configuration. You're going to call it concurrent DOS. You're going to say OK. Um, and here you got all the ROMs available. It needs to be 386, and I've chosen so there's two there's the dx army and i don't know much about pcs but the person that did the successful um 1989 concurrent dos used the army one so that's the one i chose probably you could play around with it some more want to have i'm going to give it two megabytes of memory and uh, that's all you have to do here video i'm going to choose ega that seems to be the best bet um, and then, no, I'm not going to worry about sound or mouse or joystick or Ethernet, but disks. I want to create a hard disk. So I'm going to do a new hard disk. I want to first choose, so there's 46 types. I'm going to choose a second one, which is 20 meg. And then I'm going to choose where to put it. It's already in the test. I'm going to call it cdisk.img. And that's it. You're done. It created it. You can start up the emulator. Uh, I'm going to close the window in the background. And the other thing I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to uh, change my resolution uh, to uh, 800 by 600 just to use more of the screen. Yeah, that's better. So here um, it's going to, uh, yeah, basically the BIOS hasn't been run yet. It doesn't know anything about it. Um, so you probably want to run the BIOS. So if you do that, uh, F1, um, you'll see that. Uh, most everything is standard. You have, um, it doesn't recognize the hard disk, which we'll take care of in a second. Primary display, it has this VGA, PGA, EGA option. That's the one you want. You don't want the 40 or 80 column one. So escape out of that. And then there's, this is the most important part here, auto detect disks. And you're gonna say, yes, it has a 20 meg disk. I don't know why it says type 47, it should say two, but you saw there's only 46 types. So it must just create the next free one does that and then you just say write CMOS and exit and um, now it's going to boot up and this time what it's going to do is it's actually going to pause for a second because it's um, uh, I think it'll give you the F1 again but you're just going to go oh no it's pausing now because it's like oh I have a hard disk but it's not partitioned what do I do and it's going to ask you eventually for a floppy and that's when you use your boot disk you have to boot into, yeah, so then you just resume. And this time it's going to say, as for disk here, you can go and change your drive to boot disk utility. Good key ready. It's loading it. Now you're loading doctor, uh, concurrent, digital research concurrent DOS. I think sometimes it was referred to as Dr. DOS. And it puts you into this install, uh, but you're not ready to install yet because you haven't, uh, partition the disk, so hit escape and run. Uh, now we're in concurrent DOS. In fact, we have the four uh, versions of Windows. You can access them using control one, two, three, four. I'll show you that more later. But I want to run F disk. I was using the crow. You have to use the, the number pad. The, the one, two, three, four on top of the query don't work. So I want to create a partition uh, for my 20 meg. Yep, this is going to Take a while, so I'll fast forward over that. Okay, it's finished. Give it a name. I call it hard disk. Boring. Okay, now what you want to do is hit three, select a bootable partition, and you're going to select the only one that's there. And now you can escape. 
and it's it's gonna when you hit okay it's just gonna reboot the machine and here I make sure I hit the delete key because I do want to go back into setup. I don't I don't know if it asks you for it or not, but this way it's good. And so now you can go back under auto detect hard disk and say yes and say yes and then write to CMOS and uh, say yes. And now what it's going to do is it's going to recognize the hard disk as partition. It's not formatted yet. It doesn't have an operating system on it. So it's going to sit there and wait a little bit. And after a few seconds, um, it's going to um, move further on. And then it'll just boot Dr. DOS. And this time you can use the install. Uh, yeah, here we go. Now if you hit F1, it's going to load Dr. DOS. Yep. Or, I'm sorry, I keep saying doc, uh, concurrent DOS. Digital research is concurrent DOS. So, doctor concurrent DOS, I guess. Um, yeah, and so now I hit F10 and F1 for drive C. And um, <clears throat> it's going to ask you for the first disk. And I will speed through this because it's going to take a while. Here we go. Okay, it wants the second disk, so you just go up here and say, give me uh, utilities, and hit OK. All right, we're done. I'm going to hit reboot. So here, uh, it may work, it may not. You know, the, uh, sometimes it just gets a ROM BIOS error. This means you have to go back into the BIOS and um, ask for, okay, it's working this time. And it, it just loaded. Look at that, beautiful. If you go escape, now I'm, the, I'm, I'm on the C drive, and we're all done. Okay, so I'm not going to use this version because um, I've already copied some software in it, but that's basically how you, you create a hard disk version of a concurrent DOS for it to work. So uh, quit it. Um, and again, this this is exactly what I've been doing up here with this version, um, uh, C, um, concurrent DOS. Um, so again, I'm just going to start it up. And again, same configuration that I just did. I'm going to close this window behind and uh but i've i've copied a few more files over um in fact if we take a look at it um you can see that i've got some games and stuff and by the way i have, I have win image um running so if i open double click on this it'll actually show me what is in here so i've got a chopper game uh, q basic etc so yeah so let me just show you a, a little bit of um, concurrent DOS. So if i hit escape here i am and again, one of the first things is I have now four uh, DOS shells available. I've got um, Control 1, Control 2, Control 3, and Control 4. Um, if I go back, so if I do a CD uh, into CDOS, concurrent DOS, and do a directory on um, uh, start at EXE, you'll see that this looks a lot like an MS-DOS. It's got XCopy, it's got Attrib format. Now, if I do a dir-w on on command, yeah, I don't have anything, but it's actually on start at CMD is where I get all of the commands. And the interesting ones will be, so that has a file manager. I'm not that interested in that. It has the window manager. I don't know what's called menu. It's window manager menu, I guess. It has this, the, the show t talks about disk stuff. It has, um, you can reboot the whole thing, but it has, um, or is it a uh, window, which allows you to move between windows. So again, you just saw me using the control keys, but I can also go, so if I type window, I can go window top and equals two, and that'll take me to the second one. And then I can just keep going around and around and equals three and can come back to window top and equals um, one. Um, at the end, what I'm going to show you is, you can see you can also resize windows. It gets a little um, confusing. I'll show you that at the end. I'll leave the windows fully open. But the way to do that is, um, if I go to um, star.cmd, uh, it's the, um, if I run W menu, it runs the Windows Manager. And so now if I hit Control Plus on the keypad, it lets me place, size, even change, so I can size a window. I can place a window. Um, I'm gonna leave it full screen. I can I can size a window, make it smaller or larger. Again, well, not larger but smaller. I'm gonna just leave it as is for now, and then I can change the color of a window. 
I can change the foreground color. So maybe I'll do the, the, sorry, you can do the background color. It gets a little distracting. So what I think I'll do is, um, I'll change the foreground color so we, we know what, so window one, we're going to, uh, change the foreground color to, uh, yeah, like that's pleasant. And, um, oops, get out of it. Do window two. I think I'll only use two or three windows. Let's do different foreground color on that. Color, uh, yeah, orange. Why not? Okay. And then window three. Um, uh, what's display actually? Uh, doesn't really do anything. Okay. But, uh, I can change the color. So let's just go. Do we have? Green, yeah, that's a traditional one. All right, so we have, um, those are the three different colors, or four now. We have uh, that, 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 and that, right? That's like sort of light blue and green. Yeah, I think those are fine. Okay, so, um, but the stop command's pretty cool. It kind of, if you type it, it sort of shows you what's currently running, so there's nothing. Uh, we have banked window, uh, tells you how much free memory you have. Uh, oh, bank, right. So you have, yeah, I don't know enough about Windows to, oh, I mean, uh, PCs to know if this is like 384K of regular memory, then bank. I, I don't know. Uh, but the stop command is also the, the job processing command that you can have. So it's pretty cool. Um, okay. So let's just show you a couple of things that you can do. Uh, so if I'm in, um, so let's just go to games. Um, now I played around with this a little bit. If I go to games, and uh, I tried to run baby, uh, and uh, it just runs too fast. <laughs> so uh, that's not one to use. Donkey Kong is one that works pretty well. Um, press any key, no joystick. Uh, if we want it fast, you'll see that um, you can go up the ladder and then uh, see if yeah, boom, and we're dead. Um, I'm not going to spend any time playing games here. Uh, but what's interesting, what I wanted to show you is how how it takes over the screen, right? So if I, um, for instance, play Donkey Kong again, and um, right, so now I'm in the game, and I'll do slow this time. So it's running. Um, I can go Control Two, and or yeah, so Donkey Kong sort of. Oh, because it seems to use control, but control three lets me out of it, and then I can go to anyone. So if some are controlled four and three are being used by Donkey Kong. But here, um, I can now, I'm on window two, if I go and try to run a different game, so I can go back to games, and uh, maybe yeah, if I try to run baby, uh, well, let's actually do chess, because that's the one I wanted to try. If I go and the Psyon, and run chess um, and say IBM color. It actually says this program is suspended while other programs in the graphics mode. So that's how it kind of deals with that. So the other cool thing I can do is I can actually use a stop command and say stop. Yeah, now it says I have, so this is a lot like the jobs command in the QL. I have um, chess um, and Donkey Kong each using 400K and I can say stop uh, DCOM uh, window number one and it'll kill it. Now, if I go to window number two, it started the chess game up, and I can put it in, um, yeah, and kind of let it run. Now, as it's running in the background, if I go back to one, it actually suspends it because you have this other command. Uh, if I go back, uh, let me go to three, CD, CDOS, uh, dir, uh, start at CMD. Uh, so there's a suspend command. Um, where is it? Uh, uh, it's here somewhere. There's not at CMD. Uh, at CMD. No, it's not found, but it does exist. So if you click suspend, uh, it says suspend is on. Um, so what you can do, so let me, um, you have to do it per window. So if I go back to, well, let me stop chess in window two. And then if I go to, uh, I can just say, 
window top n equals 2. And I can say suspend off. <clears throat> By the way, if I, if I start chess up again here, you'll see that unfortunately it puts it in this god awful white mode. Um, and the reason it didn't before is because graphics were all already kind of. Uh, so let me get out of this. And the way, the way to do this is you go back to window one, start Donkey Kong up again, and go back to window two, start chess. It'll suspend itself, go to window three, and kill Donkey Kong. It's a roundabout. But again, these are the kind of cool things you can do when you have a multitasking operating system. Now to go window two, and we're back in this mode. Now this is no longer suspended. So if I go into um, and start going, notice that it's overriding the window now because it's now, it doesn't, it switches between graphics and non-graphics mode, and that's kind of what you get. So yeah, so that's sort of a, a problem. Um, that you get, but, um, uh, and again, uh, it's, it's going to do any window as soon as it moves, it's just going to, um, overwrite uh, just, yeah, so you can see this, but I can say stop. This is very reminiscent to the QL, right? So anyway, now it's stopped and, um, yeah, so let's see what else we have. Um, if we go to, um, window, let's go to window four this time and say CD util. Um, DOS shell would not would not run in here. I tried it. It just gives you that and just quits. But QBasic will. Um, yeah. And we can say 10 for i equals 1 to 1,000. 20 print i. Let's do comma separated. 30 next i. And then we do a, a run. Uh, how do we do a run? And run it and again the suspend mode is set here we can actually clear it and then we can go back to four and it's and it, so it stops it again if we get rid of the suspend mode the same problem happens the one thing i don't know about q basic is how do you stop it uh, because if it's running um so if i'm running it uh like control c doesn't stop it how do you there's no escape so i don't know how to how to quit it so if i have an infinite one it um um, I have trouble, uh, but again, same thing. It's using sort of the graph. I think it's using graphics most. If I do decom, oh no, it'll actually work. So those those two will work together. So that's interesting. Um, let's say no and say five for slow. Let's go to four. Oh, I have to go to three first. And now let's see. Let's run this. Yeah, yeah. So they're both running. And they're not interfering with each other. So that's pretty cool. Well, um, I will say, well, they're both running, but they're also both suspended. Uh, does it say if they're suspended? Uh, it doesn't tell you they're suspended. But if I go back to one, this will continue running. I can go to four, and then it'll continue running. So that's kind of cool. You can, um, you know, so it's not necessarily true multitasking, because if I turn suspend off on this one, it'll also overwrite the screen. So let, let's do that really quick. Uh, and then we'll we should it wrap it up soon. Let's exit. Uh, no. Nope. And so if I say suspend off, Q basic, escape, and just I'm going to quickly write the program again, and then run it, and go to three. Yeah, you can see that on the bottom of the screen it's still writing it. So it's not just graphical programs that'll overwrite each other. So uh, or at least I I, I, get, I don't know how QBasic works um, in terms of that, but uh, uh, so you're going to have to go to four, hit return, yeah, and get back in there. So yeah, um, it's kind of cool. Um, the other programs I've played with, um, uh, oh, whoa. So yeah, it's it. That's weird that it actually. Uh, so it definitely, you, yeah, you can, you can see on the bottom here. So it's. Because suspend is off, it's not well behaved. So suspend is kind of an important feature. Uh, but if you go, um, the other ones I've had, Chopper is a game it worked. And then if it goes under Utils, uh, I had, I'm going to have to quit. So I'm going to go stop QBasic4. So that's nice that you can just kill it. Um, and uh, under Utils, I had uh, uh, Word Processor, and that works. 
uh, CD. Uh, if I start that up, um, uh, so it's C util WP, hello world. And uh, I think that behaves itself really well. Um, so that's in two, so that's four. And then one is the game still running. Yep, but this has been quick. Um, so, so that I don't take up all your time, I think the last thing I will show you is that again, I can, for, for some of these command windows, if I want to re, uh, I can resize them. So let's do that. Uh, control plus. Oh, right. Control plus will not work if there's a graphics thing working. So I have to stop, uh, decom. So the window manager won't work if there's a graphics program working. I think now it will. So again, I can size my window using, the, I'm using the arrow keys. So if I want to have a small command window up here, place it sort of up here. It's almost like very reminiscent just uh, terminate and say resident program and then give it a different color. So maybe I want my background color to be, let's do that. And use a for, let's do the foreground color a little differently. Yeah, that looks better. If I want to uh, move that window down, I can move it down out of the way. Yeah, so again, it's it's pretty cool. It, it kind of does a little bit of Windows managing, but obviously, like the QL, there's lots of places where it overwrites. Um, unlike the QL, it only gives you four uh, uh, threads, basically, or four concurrencies. But overall, I really like it. And, uh, you know, in the comments below, if you've used uh, concurrent DOS, I'd be very interested to hear your, um, you know, your feedback on how, how it is on actual hardware. So I'm going to wrap up here because this video is going to get too long otherwise. Uh, thanks for joining me for this DOS Ember. Go ahead and watch some other cool DOS Ember videos. And I'll have, uh, I don't know if this will be my last one, depending on when it comes out, or if there will be another one coming after this. So thanks for joining me, and I'll see you next time.